Uh, let's move on to the next session. This is the last fourth session where we will uh, discuss the Chinese soft power in the new circumstances. Uh, there are numerous ongoing discussions about the China and its uh, image in the mass media and among experts. The assessments are at times contradictory, with some discussing how uh, China will improve its image using new mechanisms such as uh, uh, medical soft power, while others stressing its worsening image uh, on the world stage. So we have decided to devote our last final session to our experts' uh, view on these uh, inconsistent evaluations. Uh, let me give uh, the floor to the Mr. Uh, Umarov, Timur Umarov, who, uh, who will uh, tell about, uh, about us, about the uh, Chinese soft power, the changing Chinese soft power nowadays. Timur, please go ahead. Yeah, um, here I am again. Thank you so much. Um, th those questions that were put, um, uh, that were sent to me before, um, was that uh, some ex experts say uh, that the uh, about the talk about uh, worsening of uh, China's image, while others claim uh, that uh, the reputation improved after the COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, uh, I would say I, I agree with both. Uh, maybe for some people the image of China improved, but for others um, it definitely um, worsened. Um, and um, first of all, I want to start by saying that um, I totally agree, agree with the, the idea that we started this event with, um, that Arnett told that we're not going to appear in a new reality after a pandemic will be over. Um, what we are going to see is um, just the trends that have been there for several years already. Those trends are going to uh, continue to be more visible to us. Um, if we talk about soft power, Chinese soft power is a very uh, popular topic among um, China watchers. Everyone loves this topic. Um, and when you uh, mention soft power, the uh, three things that came to my mind um, appear to actually be um, the, the pillars of uh, Chinese soft power around the world and in Central Asia as well. Um, first of all, it's like the main symbol of um, uh, Chinese soft power, uh, Confucius Institutes, um, and uh, China studies classes uh, in um, all around the world. In Central Asia, we have 13 of them, and uh, the number is uh, growing. The last one was opened in Samarkand, in my hometown. Um, and we have like more than um, 20,000 students uh, that are learning Chinese um, in the region. So I don't think that this trend um, is gonna disappear. I don't think that after pandemic people will uh, stop learning Chinese. Um, it's still a very, um, very valuable asset for a person uh, to know Chinese uh, because China is still a uh, second largest economy. Uh, China's uh, economy is already um, recovering, um, started to recover. Um, the pandemic is in China uh, seems to be uh, seems to be over. Mm. Uh, so um, I don't think that people are going to forget about Chinese. Um, the second pillar of uh, China's soft power is um, exchange programs. Um, this is somehow connected with the first pillar. Um, for uh, people in Central Asia, uh, China is a very popular destination to uh, get their degrees. Um, um, I myself got my master's um, in China and a lot of my friends uh, did the same. So um, according to statistics, there are more than 30,000 students were in 2018. Um, I also don't think this is going to change in the New Year's future uh, because this gives um, a lot of opportunities for people um, at home. Um, and the third pillar is international media. 
Um, and here uh, we see that China totally fails um, in uh, popularization of, uh, of its international media in Central Asia. First of all, uh, because it's uh, like I'm talking about those um, outlets and uh, TV channels like CCTV and China Daily that are not in Chinese, but um, in English or uh, Russian. Um, first of all, they don't have uh, national language, language um, media. Um, they only have um, Russian CCTV. Uh, which is not uh, very popular, I guess. Um, and another thing is uh, uh, has uh, a lot to do with um, internal um, situation in Central Asia. We know that many, um, most of the countries that are don't have uh, freedom of uh, total freedom of press, and um, it would be really difficult for uh, Chinese international media to come to Central Asia. Um, so those are the um, things that uh, China succeeded in, uh, but there are still a uh, lot of problems with Chinese soft power in the region, um, and those problems are not going to disappear. Um, so first of all, it's anti-Chinese sentiment. Um, Anti-Chinese movements are uh, driven, in my view, by um, some nationalistic uh, groups, um, at least in um, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Um, in uh, COVID-19, the thing is that uh, we know that it's not the first time China became, uh, like China, the, the epidemic originated in China. Um, and this gives uh, fuel to those nationalistic groups to um, continue uh, like hating China or uh, being dissatisfied with the uh, uh, Chinese expansion in the region. Um, and China sees those problems. China uh, tries to address them by, um, first of all, um, public diplomacy. In the recent times, we've seen that Chinese officials became very active um, in Western social media that is blocked in China, but uh, they are uh, very successful in using it. For example, if you go to um, right now, if you open um, the Twitter of the embassy of China in Kazakhstan, the first thing that you will see that um, uh, they are supporting WHO and um, talking trash about uh, President Trump. Um, I, I don't know whether the Chinese embassy in Kazakhstan should be thinking about uh, China-US relations and whether um, this is the main uh, purpose of their um, embassy in Kazakhstan, but uh, they do think that it's very important for Kazakh people to know um, uh, how our relations with uh, the U.S. are going. Um, another uh, example of um, uh, China's presence in social media um, is a, a Telegram channel. For example, uh, Uzbek uh, embassy, um, uh, sorry, Chinese embassy in Uzbekistan has a Telegram channel and they post a lot of um, interesting stuff there um, from how to make an origami to um, news of um, Chinese um, officials helping um, Uzbek people fight coronavirus. And here we come to uh, this um, new trend uh, that we've witnessed for um, several months um, is uh, so-called mask diplomacy. Um, China has shown um, uh, that um, it's willing to um, help uh, Central Asian states to fight coronavirus. China shows that um, uh, right now um, in the world, China is a responsible power. It's not um, what, what, in my view, what Beijing wants to uh, change is that is, is this um, 
perception of China as a source of COVID-19. And China wants to change it to um, to the the very responsible power, responsible superpower that helps other countries uh, with masks, with um, knowledge, with um, uh, sending um, its own medical personnel to um, help fighting um, this uh, crisis. Um, but all in all, um, uh, in the end, uh, social uh, soft power, sorry, came comes to the popularization of the way of life, and in this term, uh, China fails completely. Um, people uh, in Central Asia. Excuse me, you have one minute. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm already um, in the ending. Um, people in Central Asia. Um, do not know uh, many things about uh, China's culture, for example. If you, if you ask anyone who is um, noticing one of the most famous Chinese science fiction writer, um, I don't think there will be many people who uh, heard about him or um, how many Chinese celebrities can you can um, like ordinary person on the street name except for Jackie Chan um, or does anyone in Central Asia listen to Chinese music or watch uh, Chinese um, TV series? Um, no one does, and uh, here we come uh, to the notion that um, Russia and the United States are still, in terms of uh, soft power, are uh, two main um, players in Central Asia, and China has a long way to um, go uh, to that level. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, dear Timur, for uh, such informative speech. I totally agree with you. And uh, I think people know not only uh, Jackie Chan, but also Jet Li and other actors. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So indeed, in the beginning of the pandemic, the China seemed to be a global outcast. Uh, xenophobia and racism grew throughout the world. And not only Chinese, but also other Asian people felt, felt that. So further, as we saw, the China become the first winner over the outbreak of the coronavirus uh, in their country and is now helping the world with this medical care. This is a fact. And as it was in the previous session, we have two commenters on the session. It's uh, Dr. Catherine Owen and uh, Anton Bugayenka. So uh, I'm giving the word to Dr. Owen. Please go ahead. You have up to three minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was a really comprehensive uh, and a very, very interesting speech, Timur. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I have sort of three, maybe uh, three and a half points uh, I'd like to make. Um, I guess my overall feeling of whether um, Chinese soft power or attitudes towards China is uh, improving or, or worsening, my, my, my overarching feeling is that as with anything, I think it will um, intensify um, and confirm pre-existing opinions about China. So if you think that, um, you know, China is a malevolent force in the world, you're probably even more likely to think that after coronavirus. If you are broadly supportive of the China model, then you're probably even more likely to do so after uh, the virus. Um, so, yeah, um, I think what's quite interesting, I mean, I, I work in higher education and um, there is uh, some interesting uh, opinions coming out about international student recruitment. Uh, and I think certainly uh, in the short term, we'll probably see China winning on that front, uh, given the, the, the fact that many uh, universities uh, in the West won't be able to physically accept students um, in the foreseeable, or at least certainly uh, in September. Uh, and the, arguably China's um, sort of uh, positive handling, relatively positive handling of, of the virus means it's safer perhaps to study there. So that's, uh, I think, one uh, important uh, factor to consider. Um, I also think that the, what has worked well in the Chinese, Chinese case, I, I work on local governance um, in relation to, to, to Eurasia and including China, um, is actually China's system of grassroots governance. So this kind of, you know, social welfare that's organized through the, like the, the street level, through the local residence committees, 
And we really see these, there's this very grassroots kind of social aid networks really coming to the fore in China's successful handling uh, of the virus. And I think that is something that could potentially be seen as a, as a, as a model for replication uh, for countries within uh, China's sphere of influence. And then finally, just my third point uh, is um, something that I, uh, I didn't hear you mention, Timur, maybe you did and I just uh, didn't hear it, is this uh, so-called health Silk Road, uh, which I think is supposed to be, you know, one of uh, sort of China's sort of health diplomacy initiatives. I mean, this predated COVID-19, um, but what it is exactly, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe uh, somebody else has a, has a bit of a better idea. Is it a, um, just an umbrella term for China, Chinese health-related foreign aid? Um, or is it um, a kind of more sort of, you know, based on more on sort of cross-pollination, mutual R&D? Um, so, um, yeah, I do think perhaps maybe we need to have a bit of a discussion when we're thinking about soft power uh, in uh, relation to coronavirus, what this uh, health silk road uh, is actually going to be about. Thank you, Dr. Owen. Uh, so, the, our last commenter is uh, Anton Bugayenka. Anton, please go ahead. You have... Uh, um, up to three minutes, please try to fit in this time, and then we will go to the question and answer session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. And um, no, um, I will start um, from that. I very agree that this, um, um, from what I see now in uh, our public opinion, uh, that uh, China's image. Uh, it's on the one hand, it's an improve from for some people and for some people it's getting worse so it's uh, it's actually that's right because uh because uh that's improving improving it comes from uh how Timur said that it's a responsible power chinese cultivates this, this in our own propaganda and sharing this in now in very active sharing in central asia and some of people um start to believe it and um and all oh, it, it and actually, these people usually is uh, like like very like an iron hand and like an, like some uh, very strong methods. What China used to uh, to solve the problem with coronavirus. And uh, here was, I also rem uh, remind this uh, that's about umbrella or it will be uh, more than umbrella. I mean about the right project. I think that uh, now it looks more like umbrella, but uh, in the future, uh, after this crisis, especially this crisis, maybe the, is the, will start this point. It start to be the, uh, the let BRI more than umbrella project, uh, 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 more than umbrella of uh, uh, finance projects. Uh, and there, uh, there we will see uh, some. And uh, actually, it came not from um, like. Uh, Central Asian people start to thinking about China and start learning Chinese not, but uh, this coronavirus will change economic situation. And uh, before um, Central Asian countries will uh, concentrate on a Western uh, civilization, on like from through Russia to Western civilization. Of course, this connection with Russia still. Uh, will go on, but their connection with China, um, starting from economy, and uh, as uh, uh, we all uh, know, here the soft, uh, Chinese soft power in Central Asia, it's more about sticky power, um, but sticky in not, uh, not in a bad uh, thinking, but it's uh, like, uh, mm, it's economic, it's um, more related to economic things. Uh, people uh, would like to connect with China and China as a, a growing market, as a, like our new goal. Um, so will uh, let us start to pay attention on Chinese uh, Chinese public uh, too, as we see now from the story with article uh, was published in Chinese uh, website, and uh, after our foreign ministry uh, had a talks with uh, Chinese ambassador. Uh, so here, okay, let's come to Chinese uh, yeah. Chinese. Yeah, Anton, your time is unfortunately is up. Please, last oh, just, 10, 10, 10, 15 about, seconds. Uh, yes, yes, about uh, just about this current situation uh, of the Chinese diplomats, diplomats kind of attacks. But actually, it's not attacks. I think this is uh, aggressive defense because uh, China now feels very vulnerable. 
And uh, they, uh, before they didn't start this in Central Asia because United States and, and China actually didn't pay very big attention on the Central Asia in information uh, side. But after the, uh, the first uh, things happened, it's uh, Pompeo visits and published of uh, Central uh, Asian strategy. And in the same time, this was, uh, this was a starting of coronavirus and starting of competition in a world side. Uh, and after this, uh, it, um, this world, uh, like, um, from high levels uh, competitions come to the Central Asia and here we also start in a new uh, like information war and China at that time feels very vulnerable and start to aggressive defense at that time. So it's mm -hmm. uh, all my comments on this topic. Mm -hmm. Thank now. you, thank you dear Anton. Uh, so uh, dear colleagues, uh, this, uh, this was the last comment of the, our uh, session